Okay, it is uh, 9.35 p.m. I leave for the airport at 7 a.m. And I haven't even began to pack, but I need to finish off my Zoom Q2N 4K review. March, April, May. June. Four and a half months ago, I made a video comparing the best cameras under $200 and one of them was the Zoom Q2N 4K and I got a ton of comments on that video asking for more about the Zoom, people saying they're interested in the Zoom. It's kind of a unique weird little camera and not a lot of people are talking about it and so I wanted to make a full comprehensive review talking about the Zoom. I filmed a bunch of stuff, I've used it uh, pretty extensively but never finished my video on it and so I leave for the airport in nine hours. My studio is in shambles. Look at my microphone setup. I have a Joby ball head connected to a Manfrotto plate microphone just because I didn't want to set up my boom overhead pole. I'm stressed, I gotta pack. Let's talk about the zoom. So normally with my videos I don't talk about specs too hard because I leave that for everyone else to cover. No one is really talking about this camera so let's dive into the specs. The zoom Q2N 4K is the follow-up to the zoom Q2N. From the name you probably guessed it but it can shoot 4K. Here is a list of the resolution and frame rates it has available. I mostly like to shoot in out of 4K24 or 108060 for slow-mo b-roll. The camera has a 16 megapixel, one-third of an inch sensor. The zoom comes with one 3.5mm input for line in recording, another 3.5mm jack so you can monitor with headphones or for line out recording, which is a pretty cool feature, a micro USB port for charging and power, and a micro HDMI port so you can use this camera as a webcam or for live streaming. The Zoom has 11 preset picture profiles and 3 audio preset input levels. Or you can manually set your microphone gain with this 1 to 10 dial on the side. It has an 80, 120 or 160 hertz low cut filter for blocking out wind or other background noise. And utilizes a digital zoom to give you 5 different field of views. With the widest being about a 15mm equivalent. Mm. Now I've been using the zoom in a lot of real world scenarios and I'm going to show a bunch of test footage here but first off to show its vlogging capabilities I made a little test vlog just to see if it was possible to vlog on this handy little 4k recorder <laughs> It is Wednesday the 19th of June, uh, just on my way to work. I have to drop off a suitcase uh, that I used for my recent trip to China. Just got back last week. China cinematic video coming soon. Oh, hang on. Hey, just returning this carry-on from the... All right, come in. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, how is the dynamic range in this car shot? I'm shooting everything in this little vlog sequence in the flat profile but it's quite bright outside and it's quite shady right now in my car, I can see. With the zoom, it's so much easier. The wide angle, I know I'm getting myself in. I feel like I could mount this thing pretty easily right on my dash here. Some of those like car lip sync videos. If I mounted that right there, that would be perfect for like, uh, like a road trip podcast. Sit down, talk to your partner, talk to whoever you're road tripping with and just talk about life, capture those memories, driving with a grandparent, just throw the zoom down, ask them about their childhood, capture those audio memories. Here's another good dynamic range test. I'm in the shade, background is very bright and sunny, shooting in the flat profile, how much are we capturing of each? Okay, here's a really harsh dynamic range test and I'm gonna do it with the flat profile and then with the auto profile and see if the flat is actually any better than the outdoor. I'm actually gonna do flat and outdoor see if one actually has and then this is the outdoor profile uh testing dynamic range versus the flat profile is there any difference there
Okay, made it to work. I should probably wrap up this little vlog segment because I'm getting carried away and I'll just start vlogging my whole day because vlogging with this Zoom is so fun. It's so little, so compact, so discreet, good audio, wide shot, so I'm not worried about not getting myself in frame even though I don't have a screen to see. So yeah, we'll see how the footage turns out, but from this side of things, I really like the Zoom for vlogging. Now, I take singing lessons as part of my major in college, and it's good practice to film all of your lessons to watch back and learn from. Uh, in the past, I'll either use my phone or I'll use one of my DSLR mirrorless cameras like the GH4 or the S1. A lot of the time I'll end up using my phone, but it can get tricky because you run out of storage, mounting your phone to record yourself can sometimes be tricky, and the audio of an iPhone is okay. For the last semester, I've been using the Zoom a lot, having it in my backpack with a little tripod, setting it up, and knowing that I'm getting really high quality audio with this camera has been really awesome and something I think could be a real game changer for musicians. Now I knew that a lot of the people interested in this camera would be musicians, so I wanted to do some sort of music test comparison. I haven't played guitar and sang at the same time in like 10 years, but I knew people would want to see it and I'm dedicated to YouTube. Now the Zoom shoots 4K 24 frames a second, so I wanted to see for what other price point we could get 4K24 with some sort of dedicated microphone setup. And what I came up with is Number one, my iPhone, the iPhone 8 Plus, shoots 4K24. I paired that with the Shure MV88 condenser microphone for iOS. Second was the Zoom. And third was the Panasonic G7 paired with the Rode VideoMic Go. Once again, I would like to state that I haven't played guitar and sang at the same time in a long time, so don't judge judge the quality of the audio and the and the microphone but don't don't judge my singing don't judge my musician music abilities while we have this set up here's a speaking test while i take a drink of water um we got the g7 with the rode video mic on top of it we got the zoom q2n 4k right here wide field of view 96 hertz and we have the iphone 8 plus with the shure m88 microphone here is my speaking voice when I'm doing YouTube videos. I'm normally projecting a little bit like this. That one really seems to be clipping over here. Um, but uh, here's a quick comparison for speaking while I have this set up. Once again, I would like to preface, this test is purely for uh, tech review purposes. This is not me trying to make it as a country singer. Country roads take me home to the place 
Frick, I don't know if any of those are good. Okay. Now, if you're picturing this as a vlog camera all in one setup type of thing, having the ability to slow down footage can add a lot to a video. It's a really nice touch and it's a really handy thing to have. Over the last few months, I've shot a bunch of different uh, clips in 1080 60, and here's just a collection of some of them showing what you could potentially do with this camera. I mentioned in the beginning the picture profiles on this camera and I just wanted to quickly cycle through them and show you the different ones. There's outdoor, sunset, there's night, there's concert light, jazz club, dance club, monochrome, sepia, film, X process, there's flat, outdoor, sunset, night, concert light, jazz club, dance club, monochrome, sepia, film, cross press flat. The camera does come with an auto picture profile, but I found out all that does is pick between outdoor, indoor, and concert light, I think. I did leave it on auto most of the time. One downside is you don't have a ton of customization with your uh, picture settings. So we can't select ISO, frame rate, shutter speed, anything like that. The camera's doing all that itself. Now, obviously with a cheaper, small censored camera, we would expect not the best low light capabilities. Wait, wait. You're good. Hello. Try to compare the two Hi. to a nightlight. Slow down, I'm too tired. Come on, tree. Hey, buddy, we're gonna go inside. Come on. Tree? I got a special one inside. No, that's not gonna be <laughs> We don't ever live there. And it's it's not great. All cameras have limitations, so obviously you would just, in really dark scenarios with no lighting, it's a $200 camera. You're not gonna get great results. The lighting doesn't affect the audio. You're still gonna get great audio, but your picture is not gonna be great. Now, the Zoom uses two AA batteries. In the beginning, I was using standard alkaline cheap batteries and I was getting pretty bad battery life out of it. Shooting in 4K24, I got about 29 minutes on several different tests total. So in the beginning, I thought the zoom was kind of a bust just because of this battery issue. But then I bought some nice rechargeable batteries and my results were pretty amazing. In 4K24, I got one hour and 35 minutes of recording. In 1080 24, I got two hours and 46 minutes of recording. And on Zoom's website, they say in 720p, you can get six to seven hours of recording. The other tests match their claims pretty well, so I believe it. I'm not sure of a scenario where you want seven hours of 720p recording, but if you do, have I got a camera for you? Also with the battery, we have this micro USB input. You can connect a micro USB cable, which everyone has laying around their house. I have a whole bin of them. You can connect that to a USB wall outlet or to a power brick and it will run the power off that and run forever. So something like a webcam, time lapses, things like that. There are ways to power this exponentially. Dude, this is crazy. Okay, so check this out. Here's a fun little uh, scenario that I thought of that I wasn't sure if it was possible till right now. Using the line out on the zoom and just using a normal aux cable, running it into the mic input on my camera and then recording on the zoom down here, I now have a desktop microphone and a second angle for my video for cutaways for nice fine detail. 
there are a ton of really fun uh, real world scenarios for the zoom that it can be utilized for. And for the price point, I think it's like kind of a fun thing to add to the kit. Okay, switch back to my other microphone. That's kind of all my tests. Um, I'm heaven, West Virginia. Couple slight grievances with the $200 camera. To change the batteries or to get the SD card out, um, you do have to take off this door here, and which means if you have it on any sort of tripod or something, you do have to disconnect that to get to the to get to the batteries or micro SD card. You do have to remove it from the tripod. It's a little thing. Another thing worth mentioning that could be seen as a positive or negative is video files on the zoom don't get broken down into four gigabyte chunks like most cameras. Uh, it actually records one big file. When I record with my GH4 and record an hour long lesson, it breaks it up into like 10 different chunks and then I have to take that into Final Cut Pro, put it all into one clip, export it and then upload it to Drive or YouTube on private where I store all my footage. With the zoom I just take the micro SD card, throw it in, upload it, bada bung bada boom, done. But the file sizes do get pretty large in 4k. Here's some numbers on the screen showing some of the length times, the resolution and the attributing file size of those files from this video. So like I said, there's a lot of really fun real world scenarios where I think the zoom is a really handy, fun device. Rather than having a GoPro 7, an Osmo Pocket, an Osmo Action, a, a Movi Cinema robot in your kit to get five different versions of, of smooth footage, this $200 camera with a great microphone could be so much more beneficial in people's kits and I haven't seen anyone talking about it. The last month I've had this in my fanny pack most days just to pull out and like use for things. Fanny packs are dope. That's gonna be my first merch line when I'm a big hotshot one day. Out for a walk with your grandparents and you want to record their memories, throw it down. Bang, crisp audio. Want to live stream a podcast with your buddy? Bang. Want to record lectures or lessons and you, and you want really good audio and just some sort of picture? $200. Feel free to check out my other video where I compared this with a few other cameras in the same price range. Talked about the different kind of cameras you can get for that price. It is a small sensor. The picture on the zoom can look a little pixelated and kind of funny colored sometimes. With some simple color corrections, I was able to make it look better. It's still not comparable to like a $500 mirrorless DSLR camera, but that's not what this is. This is a really good microphone with an okay camera for $200. There's no other product out there like this, doing this. It's not for everyone. You shouldn't get it if you don't need it. But if, there, if you're someone who could see themselves using this piece of kit, I think it's a good buy for $200. I'm gonna keep it around. Anyway, it's 10 p.m. I gotta go start packing. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a like, leave me a comment. I was very irresponsible filming this at this hour when I should have been packing. I'm gonna forget stuff, but at least I finished a video I've been working on for three months. Anyway, if you want to pick up the Zoom, I'll have an Amazon b &H affiliate link down the bottom. Doesn't add any price to you, but it helps out my channel. And if you enjoyed this video, you enjoyed the way I talk about cameras, consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for the next video. Yeah. Oh, we but yeah. and hop, I'm as happy as I can be.